Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Ross School of Business. I'm Martin Filbert, Provost of the University of Michigan, and it is my pleasure to invite Regent Andrea Fisher Newman of Ann Arbor to the podium. <laughs> All my program says is that I'm going to be introduced by the provost, but I assumed he had some remarks <laughs> or, or, or something. Anyway, good morning. Um, I, I am uh, delighted to see you here all today, especially uh, this early in the morning. It's fairly impressive. Uh, my fellow board members and I really appreciate your willingness to take time from your busy schedules to reflect upon where we are as an institution to think about this year and to think about beyond. And I know that's what President Schlissel is going to talk about. President Schlissel is a leader who brings energy and vision to this extraordinarily complex organization on a daily basis and is driving our community forward on multiple fronts. And I can personally attest to this because yesterday, I am sure I was his first phone call at seven o'clock in the morning and I am sure I was his last text about 11.30 last night. <laughs> Thanks to his relentless focus on academics and upholding the highest quality standards in everything we do, U of M now ranks 20th in, among the world's best universities, which is incredible. <laughs> I, I will tell you just a little story. When we went out to do the last presidential search here, it was um, number one on our list was to find the strongest academic leader we could find. Somebody that had the, um, the good academic values, somebody that would lead from a position of, um, of strength in the academic area. And I know the board would agree that we feel we have found that individual in President Schlissel. Um, Michigan Medicine continues to excel and climb in the rankings, also experiencing record funding levels in research as the top public research university in the nation. And President Schlissel has also worked hard to address affordability, a critical issue to the board and everyone in this room. Through the innovative financial aid program that we all know is the Go Blue Guarantee, which is allowing students to attend U of M who otherwise might have not been able to afford to do so. The Board of Regents appreciates his leadership. We know from our conversations with many of you as well as others on and off campus that there's a strong consensus that he is doing a tremendous job, which is why at our last Board of Regents meeting, we announced that we intend to extend his appointment for another five years so that he will be with us through 2024. Is that five? We are grateful for his, for his commitment to the University of Michigan, and we look forward to hearing this morning about the priorities, plans, and the initiatives that he proposes to keep Michigan moving forward. Please be sure and take advantage of the opportunity to ask questions at the conclusion of his remarks. He welcomes hearing your questions about U of M's future. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Mark Schlissel, the 14th president of the University of Michigan. Thanks very much, Re Regent Newman, for that uh, overly kind introduction and for expressing the confidence of the board. Uh, I'm really incredibly gratified and uh, uh, very pleased. Uh, it's also really exciting to be here and feel the energy in the room that's really filled with a, a true cross-section of the leadership of our great university. So, you know, good morning, colleagues and students and friends. It's a pleasure to welcome you to the Ross School of Business for this year's leadership breakfast. I also thank everyone in our community that's watching on the live stream. Now, earlier this year, the Board of Regents approved a project for addition to our Detroit Observatory. The observatory is the second oldest building on our campus, but it has a historical significance that's second to none. Opened by President Tappan in 1854, it was the first dedicated research lab on our campus and the first physical representation of the U of M's amazing legacy of discovery. 
Beyond allowing our astronomers to chart the stars and discover 21 asteroids and two new comets, it allowed for highly accurate measurement of time. And by the way, that's real time, not Michigan time. <laughs> We're still working out the schematics, but the vision for the project unites what, much of what makes the University of Michigan great. There'll be space for classes in astronomy and history, as well as programming that's oriented to the public. It'll showcase our achievements in discovery and impact through interpretive displays, while also serving as a learning space for the next generation of scientists and scholars. Public higher education has changed a great deal since the first time we looked upward through the observatory's telescope a century and a half ago. But our curiosity, our quest for understanding, our passion for service, and our commitment to world-class education remain. We still reach for the stars, and we now know there are billions more to grasp. My remarks today will focus on just a few of the ways we're honoring our public mission across our three great campuses, Michigan Medicine, and the communities we serve. But before I continue, I want to acknowledge a few of our more terrestrial stars. Uh, just this week, a few days ago, a U of M professor emeritus Gerard Maru was amongst the three winners of the 2018 Nobel Prize in Physics. He was a member of our faculty in electrical engineering and computer science and in physics for 16 years until his retirement in 2004. The Nobel was awarded for groundbreaking inventions in the field of laser physics. Dr. Maru shared half of the prize with the University of Waterloo's Dr. Donna Strickland, who's also his former graduate student at the University of Rochester. And I'll point out perhaps the first woman in 50 or 60 years to win a Nobel Prize in physics. The prize honors a technique they invented called chirped pulse amplification, which was further developed here at U of M. The Nobel Committee notes that the technique paved the way towards the shortest and most intense pulses ever created by humankind and opening up new medical treatments such as LASIK surgery. Since we last gathered, many of our current faculty have been honored at the highest level. Several U of M faculty members were elected to national academies and we count four new Thurnau professors Additionally, we had four Sloan Research Fellows, one Guggenheim Fellow, one Carnegie Fellow, and two MacArthur Fellows. You can see the full list up here on the screen behind me, and some of these colleagues are here today. This fall, we're also pleased to welcome uh, new deans or interim deans in four of our schools and colleges, as well as two new executive officers. Domenico Grasso is the new chancellor at the University of Michigan Dearborn, and Ravi Pensi is our new Vice President for Information Technology and Chief Information Officer. Let's welcome our new colleagues. I've been very busy recruiting new talent as well, and my wife Monica and I were delighted to welcome the arrival of our first grandchild. Uh, this is Adelaide, like the city in Australia. No idea where the name came from, but it's lovely. Uh, she lives out of state, so Monica and I are eager to get her here for her first campus tour, and uh, thanks for allowing me this uh, indulgence. This is the final leadership breakfast of my first term here at Michigan, so I want to take a moment to reflect on a much more serious aspect of student recruitment, and it was alluded to uh, by Regent Newman. Two very important initiatives are addressing socioeconomic diversity on our campus. This fall, the first graduates of our Wolverine Pathways program are now studying on our Ann Arbor and Dearborn campuses. Wolverine Pathways is an innovative pipeline program for middle and high school students in Detroit, Southfield, and Ypsilanti. Students attend after school, weekend, and summer academic enrichment sessions and receive mentorship and guidance as they prepare for their futures. Scholars who successfully complete the program, apply to the U of M, and are admitted, receive a four-year full tuition scholarship plus additional need-based aid they might qualify for. The results are in, and like the students themselves, these results are very promising. Of the 83 Wolverine Pathway students who apply to U of M, 45 are currently enrolled on the Ann Arbor campus, and 15 are at U of M Dearborn. 80 of them total are attending a four-year college or university this fall. 
That's 91%. We're also, in our second semester, of providing tuition, uh, free tuition, to eligible Michigan students under our Go Blue guarantee. Final numbers will be available later this month, but we believe that around 10% of our Michigan resident undergraduates have their tuition paid under the Go Blue guarantee. Our numbers of undergraduates receiving Pell Grants has increased to 17.9%, with freshmen jumping from 15.8 up to 17.6% of the freshman class. One in seven U of M undergraduates is a first generation college student. Now we have a long way to go before our student body reflects the wonderful diversity of the society we serve, but we're really making progress. The achievements of Wolverine Pathways and the Go Blue Guarantee speak to the commitment we have established for our third century. We're sending a message to the people of the state and beyond that we seek to welcome students from all communities and backgrounds who have the talent and the desire to be Michigan Wolverines. I was reminded of the importance of this work earlier this year when I visited students at Ypsilanti Community High School along with Dr. Kedra Ishup, our Vice Provost for Enrollment Management. We were less than 20 minutes away from this campus, but many of the students and parents there felt that the U of M was out of their reach, too distant for their aspirations. I sometimes feel similar sentiments when I travel around the country or hear from people on my own Twitter account. Too many members of the public do not appreciate the value to them personally of the University of Michigan. But together, with your help, we're working to change that. I'm so proud of the faculty, staff, and students and supporters that are working to extend the reach and impact of our excellence throughout Michigan and beyond. We're extending our value with technology. The Office of Academic Innovation is providing access to more than 130 learning experiences through Michigan Online, including credit eligible programs and teach outs. Literally millions of learners from all around the world have already taken these courses. We're extending our value with pedagogy. U of M Flint just added a physician assistant department in its College of Health Sciences as the campus prepares to launch the first physician assistant program at our university. As Chancellor Borrego has said, the program reflects the campus's longstanding history of responsiveness to the region's workforce and health needs. We're extending our value with research. Our biosciences initiative is preparing to award its first grants totaling nearly $50 million in all three of its funding categories later this month. The initiative has already catalyzed cross-disciplinary collaborations and the proposals were bold and inspiring. We're extending our value through engagement. Michigan faculty are responding to the pressing issues of our time by providing expert legislative testimony, national, state, and local service, and by sharing their work in the media. We're extending our value through patient care Michigan Medicine has opened new care facilities in Brighton and West Ann Arbor and formed new partnerships in key regions all across our state, helping us care last year alone for more than 2.3 million patients. But most of all, we're extending our value through a collective commitment to the highest aspirations of our mission. I was very impressed by our Ford School and the We Listen student group at an event I attended just last Sunday. They brought together William Crystal, founder and editor of the Weekly Standard, and Neera Tandon, president and CEO of the Center for American Progress and former Obama administration official for a discussion of important issues. The event kicked off the Ford School's Conversation Across Difference initiative, which is an important uh, priority supported financially by the provost office. All across our university, the power of the Michigan family is strong. We're finishing our Victors for Michigan campaign at full throttle. In fact, it will be a record-breaking finish. I'm thrilled to announce here today that the University of Michigan is now the first public university ever to raise $5 billion in a fundraising campaign. It's the most successful campaign in our history and in the history of public higher education. More than 382,000 donors contributed in support of our mission. 
and their generosity included $1.1 billion dedicated to the campaign's top priority, student support. This morning's fantastic news reflects the wonderful commitment of all of you to our mission of research, education, and service. I also want to express my appreciation to my predecessor, President Emerita Mary Sue Coleman, who sent a bold goal when she successfully launched the campaign publicly back in 2013. And of course, to our Board of Regents, whose enthusiastic support and leadership helped us reach this historic milestone. And then finally, a sort of off the page, thank you to Jerry May. So Jerry May has given his heart and soul and continues to do so to the University of Michigan. Uh, he's a force of nature. He taught me things that I haven't even come to appreciate yet uh, about how to be a successful steward of important donors and how to generate and cultivate the next generation of philanthropists. Uh, this $5 billion campaign, I could easily say, would not have happened without Jerry May, so I'd like us to express our appreciation. Our world needs victors and the Michigan family has responded. So thank you donors, thank you everyone who helped the university accomplish this historic achievement. Earlier this year, a transformational commitment from Rich and Susan Rogel gave a major boost to our efforts. Their $150 million gift is the largest gift in the history of Michigan medicine. It will enable our Rogel Cancer Center with faculty members all across the campus to draw on its collaborative research culture to produce life-saving innovations in the diagnosis and treatment of cancer. The gift will also support the work of promising young scientists, help us attract outstanding cancer researchers from all around the world, and provide scholarships for medical students and other pre-doctoral trainees. One example of the Rogel Center's excellence relates to our Precision Health Initiative. Arul Chanayan of our medical school and the Howard Hughes Medical Institute has received an Outstanding Investigator Award from the National Cancer Institute to fund research in precision oncology. This seven-year, $6.5 million R35 grant will fund research to create new bioinformatics resources and identify new cancer biomarkers to improve diagnosis and develop new targeted therapies. R35 awards were developed by the NCI to provide long-term support to projects of unusual potential and ambition. Rogel Cancer Center faculty come from an impressive 53 departments across nine schools and colleges, drawing on the full breadth of our academic strength as a true center of excellence of the University of Michigan. I'm sure you've been hearing about the great work our faculty and students and staff have been doing in Detroit as well. The University of Michigan has education, research, healthcare, and service partnerships in the city, some of which stretch back for decades. And we're establishing new collaborations as our faculty and students pursue their academic interests and strengthen partnerships with community partners and city government. The Poverty Solutions Detroit Partnership on Economic Mobility that we previewed at last year's Leadership Breakfast is off to a fast start. Projects are pairing dozens of U of M experts with city departments to address challenges around health, workforce development, housing and revitalization, and public safety. Just last month, we made an unprecedented commitment that will enhance the quality of teachers we produce and the communities they will serve. Led by our School of Education, we were proud to help launch an innovative new school in Detroit on the former campus of Mary Grove College. The partnership with the Detroit Public Schools Community District, the Kresge Foundation, and others is creating a teaching school that's modeled after the concept of a teaching hospital. Students from our School of Education will hone their skills while learning the theories and pedagogical techniques that are essential to the effective practice of teaching, working alongside public school teachers and being mentored by U of M faculty. Eventually, this effort will involve students in social work and nursing along with their faculty mentors. One challenge I've been thinking about over the last few years is how can we further enhance the impact of our work in Detroit? I'm trying to find ways for all the various research and teaching programs that touch Detroit to better synergize with one another, to know about one another, and to take advantage of one another's expertise and contacts. 
I believe we have the potential to identify more engagement and partnership opportunities while committing to the transparency and mutual benefit that guide our efforts in the city. One of the recommendations made by our Detroit task force was to centralize some aspects of these activities. The goal here, of course, is not to dictate lines of inquiry or programs, but to help all of us reach our full potential and have the most impact together as researchers, teachers, students, staff, and community members. The Provost Office is creating a Detroit Advisory Committee with representation from all three U of M campuses that will be launched this fall. The task force recommended the formation of a standing committee to increase coordination of activities across all three campuses, to build greater transparency and collective impact, and to recommend steps to further these goals. And to reflect this work, we've combined three of the Detroit websites we previously had into one, detroit.umich.edu. We're also working to re-envision our physical presence in Detroit. Our Detroit Center down on Woodward has been in place since 2005, and we've purchased now the remaining third of the Rackham Building near the DIA. Our goal is to use our physical space in the best service of our mission, while holding fast to the fundamental principles that have made our Detroit partnerships thrive. Those are recognition of the expertise and knowledge that resides with our community partners, respect for each other and our resources, and equitable engagement focused on reciprocal relationships, transparency, and accountability. Last month, we announced new measures we are implementing to better prevent sexual misconduct and provide educational and support resources for our community. The new measures for faculty and staff align with our goals of improving awareness, training, reporting, and accountability regarding all forms of sexual misconduct throughout our university. Based on recommendations from a university-wide working group, we've created a centralized website devoted to sexual misconduct reporting, prevention, and education. The site is easily accessed from major university pages, including my own. The working group also recommended that U of M invest in a comprehensive sexual misconduct training and education approach for all faculty and staff. Currently, participation in training is voluntary, but it'll now be required for all. The first part of the new education and training program is in development and will be released later this fall. The working group that made these recommendations included faculty and staff experts on sexual misconduct from our three campuses and from Michigan Medicine. It was chaired by Dan Little, former chancellor of UM Dearborn, and Larita Thomas, associate vice president for human resources. I'd like to thank them and the entire working group for their efforts. <laughs> Additionally, I'm pleased to announce that U of M will again participate in the Association of American Universities National Climate Survey on sexual assault and sexual misconduct. This survey will be sent to all undergraduates, graduate and professional students on our Ann Arbor campus in February, and I urge everyone to participate. It should show us whether or how much progress we are making. Sexual misconduct has no place at the University of Michigan, and retaliation against those who report misconduct won't be tolerated. This is a belief shared by our regents, executive officers, and leaders across our community. <laughs> our work to create a safe, inclusive, and respectful culture for all is an important component of our diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative. The connection of our work on sexual misconduct to DEI allows us to tap into the existing networks of representatives across the campus and the reporting that already takes place as a way to track and understand our progress over time. I'm pleased to report that we're on schedule to complete construction of our new Trotter Multicultural Center in February with an opening scheduled for April. Early programming initiatives planned for new Trotter include an interfaith program to create opportunities and space for students examining life's deepest questions and seeking transformative impact. We're also planning a Trotter Distinguished Leaders series to increase healthy discourse and learning throughout U of M. I look forward to seeing everyone at the DEI Summit that begins Monday 
where we'll announce another great year of progress in the implementation of our campus-wide strategic plan. As I've stated on a number of occasions, human-influenced global climate change is the defining scientific and social problem of our age. And a significant component of this growing crisis is due to the burning of fossil fuels to generate energy. My predecessor, President Mary Sue Coleman, committed the university to reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 25% over a 2006 baseline by 2025. This was an ambitious goal, made more so by the energy requirements of a campus that's grown by about 20% since then. I'm pleased to announce that we're on a trajectory to meet that goal early and even exceed it in the years ahead. A new gas cogeneration turbine we're installing in our power plant, along with broad-based conservation efforts, will get us halfway there. And we're close to finalizing an agreement to purchase renewable energy that will get us to our 25% goal. Now it's time to consider what's next. I'm committed during my presidency to putting U of M on a trajectory towards carbon neutrality and levels of greenhouse gas release that are environmentally sustainable. But I know there's even more ambition within our community. Throughout our history, we've always strived to impact society in profound ways. I'd like to figure out how to do this in partnership with Ann Arbor and with other regional stakeholders in a fashion that can be replicated by others all around our state and around the nation. This is because even if we achieve a zero net carbon footprint for our campus alone, it won't make a measurable difference for global climate change. But if we do it in a way that takes advantage of our power to discover, and our ability to convene around a major challenge, we can better achieve our broader ambitions. I'd like us to do this in a way where our entire community shares in this responsibility and shares accountability for achieving this goal. In a way in which our outstanding faculty and students apply their creativity to invent new technologies and develop new public policies. And in a way that taps into the breadth of our academic excellence and involves outstanding partners at other universities, in the private sector, in government, and in the public more generally. I'll announce in the coming months the appointment of a presidential commission that'll be tasked with developing our plan. I hope to include U of M experts from our School for Environment and Sustainability, our Graham Herb and Energy Institutes, and many more. The plan will include specific targets and a timeline for U of M itself to achieve carbon neutrality in a financially responsible fashion, in the context of a recommended set of strategies that can be shared by others in Ann Arbor and around the state to achieve the same goal. The commission will consider carefully how to balance carbon neutrality in the context of overall environmental sustainability, will suggest concrete avenues to achieve our goals, and will recommend ways in which all members of our community can share responsibility for our success. These are complex issues, but I have every confidence that the University of Michigan is the place where we will make this happen. We all agree that global climate change is a monumental challenge and will need the passion, intellect, and commitment of our entire community and its many partners to achieve our goals. Before I open it up for questions, I want to make a few final comments. In recognition of U of M's historic commitment to public art, we're working to reinvigorate our collection while also seeking to strengthen its alignment with our teaching and research. This effort is being led by Christina Olson, the director of the University of Michigan Museum of Art. We'll be planning opportunities for community feedback, and I invite you all to get involved. I'm exceedingly grateful for the opportunity to lead this amazing community. This summer, as Regent Newman said, I passed the four-year mark here at U of M, and I couldn't imagine a better place to embark on the graduate phase of my presidency. <laughs> so thanks to the Board of Regents, I hope to be here for another five years uh, after my first term ends in July. One of the promises I made during my inauguration is that we would celebrate our excellence and our impact. 
In that light, up on the screen behind me are upcoming nomination deadlines for new presidential awards that members of our community suggested we create. Uh, please nominate our outstanding colleagues for these awards. It's such a joy to interact with our students, faculty, staff, and supporters, to hear your ideas and to see and feel the passion that you bring to your work and to your studies and to your leadership. I tell people all over the world that I have the best job in all of higher education. At Michigan, the possibilities are truly endless for research, for education, and for societal impact. I began today mentioning the upcoming addition to our Detroit Observatory and its significance as a symbol of our proud history and our enduring commitment to discovery. These ideas were much better expressed by Julie Ellison, a professor in LSNA and our Stamp School of Art and Design. She wrote a poem titled the Detroit Observatory 1999, which celebrated its previous restoration. The end of the poem is a wonderful expression of our great university. This building hosted once duets of stars and citizens and shall again. It is something I believe in, the public study of the public sky. The museum is done. I practice saying, listen, come. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you for all you do for the University of Michigan, and I'm open for your questions.